to us. Tom Green and I looked at it and we said, how are we going to explain this to people? Because it didn't make sense. So Tom and I built this uh, wheel and for the bearing with the uh, Ken, uh, Timken bearing on it so that uh, they could understand it. It makes a little better understanding. Next to it over here, I brought a brake shoe that came toward my car when I was sitting at a railroad crossing. So I thought, you know what, this is an educational thing. So people should realize that whenever they go to a railroad crossing and a train's going by at 50 miles an hour, they should stay back about three car lanes because if that comes off, which it did, and it hits the side of their car, they're not going to be happy. Okay. Next is a rail with torpedoes. And torpedoes are used when we were, when we were in the dark zone. Okay. And so if my train broke down, I, this is when we had cabooses. We blow a long and three short, and the uh, brake flagman would go back a mile, and he would put two of those and a flare at the track, and then he could walk almost back to the train because the next train that came by and hit those, they exploded, and that told you that you needed to stop your train immediately and then go for at least a mile at 15 or less. Okay, that's an REA cart that we actually got at a garage sale one time. And that's a 10-ton jack. Now, they use that for a couple things. Like the photo, they're lifting up a corner of a boxcar that, uh, that needed to be repaired. And, but down at the bottom is a little foot. And they can slide that underneath the rail. And they can jack the rail up, so if they want to balance, if they want to make it balanced. Uh, over here on this wall, we have building plates. These would go on, these would go on the boiler of a locomotive, and it's just like your identification. It tells that's the engine number, when it was built, who built it, and so that way they knew where the engine came from. Builders plates. They still make builders plates for all the for all the diesel electric locomotives. They're on there. These bridges are hand built by Ken Bilstein. Ken built these when he was living in Vermont. They're absolutely incredible. And what was really wild, we had a drawing almost identical of the bridge that this is. We found it in our archives. The, the paper there is a, a, what they call a dispatcher's uh, train sheet from 1907. And you can see every engineer's name is on there, the conductor's name is on there. When the train left at every point the dispatcher would go and write all that information down, and that's how the railroad kept track of their trains in 1907. The lanterns are from different railroads. This one is from Norfolk Western. Um, it is blue, and that tells the engineer if that's on the back or front of a train, that he cannot couple to it because somebody is either working under the car, on the car, or above the car. Somewhere there's some an employee on that. The red, you can see the two red lanterns. They are conductor's lanterns, and they're from north from a nickel plate. And this one, the conductor painted red because as the sun came up. He was concerned that the engineer could not see a signal, so he painted he painted the lantern red. All right. Um, this down here, train from 1910. Okay, a Lionel train from 1920s. These are uh, date nails. A date nail would be put onto a bridge somewhere or on the end of railroad ties 
And so if you see it says 29, that's the year that it was installed onto the railroad, went into service in 1929. 23, 55, so we've got, we've got several of those. And we've got just a lot of real artwork. Down below that yellow signal, that yellow signal is a uh, like a factory railroad crossing. They just put it up and that way you know that there could be a train coming. It's your responsibility to watch it. Look for it. The next one is a caboose lantern from 1920s. And these two over here are what they call turnout switch lanterns. So they would be on the top. And as you bring your train in, if a lot of times the lead, which is the main track, they would all be green. If it was yellow or red, then the engineer knew that he was going into that track. So he better, if he wasn't supposed to, he better get control of his train. Down here is a wind-up. We don't know. I haven't been able to discover when that was created, but uh, that's a wind-up, and we have, actually have the key to it, so that's, and then over there is one of the first battery-operated trains. This is an approach signal, and the approach signal tells the engineer that when he goes by, that he better be ready to stop his train at the next signal, because he could go it, there could be something on the other side of that signal for him, all right? So that's, uh, that's an important. And if you're going more than medium speed, which is half of the maximum speed, so if you're doing 60, you immediately have to slow your train down to 30, all right? Down this way, oh, over here, I didn't, sorry. The way railroads were built, the government gave them their land, and then they went and they sold stock. So these are actual retired stock certificates. And then after they had their money, they had architects draw their tracks out for them. As you can see, this is from Norfolk Western in 1979. Those are the tracks that, that are going through uh, Lorraine. Over here, the next case, I'm sorry, get my hand out of your way. Okay. The next case has my pay slip when I went from Peru, Indiana to Bellevue. And I have my train orders. And that tells exactly what I'm going to do, where I'm going to do it with my, with my train as far as speed restrictions. And of course, everybody had to have their book of rules and their safety book of rules. Over here, this is a, a consist. Now this consist tells us the number of the car, what position it is in the train, what it is carrying, where it came from, and where it's going to, and how much it weighed. Now the purpose of that is when you, if you have a derailment, you can hand this to a fire department or a police department and they can know whether there's dangerous materials in that car. And up above, that's a switch lock, which is on every main uh, turnout, and those are switch keys. Every engineer or conductor has a key for his railroad uh, that he runs on the division. This stuff over here is just basically from the nickel plate. Um, the nickel plate went out of business in uh, 1964 when Norfolk Western uh, took them over. So all this stuff became available. They were throwing it out. And then down here, this is actually Bellevue Yards uh, back in 1960, about 1966. And of course, 
the, on the right hand side there's no tracks but there are today there's another 40 set of another set of 40 tracks in there okay those pins down there are all the railroads that now make up Norfolk Southern down the hallway we've got some railroad art and uh, so we put this up for uh, to let people know that uh, the railroad business is just very lonely. You're out there in the middle of the night, bad weather, while everybody else is snug in their bed. On the right-hand side are caboose lanterns from New York Central, and this one is from Norfolk Western. As you go down here, we will go go straight down. You can you see this the red signal. Now the red signal tells us that's your stop and stay. And you want your stop and stay because what happens if you go past that signal, you're gonna run into the back end of that train. So this is this tells you you don't move. On this side. This is uh, Chris Adelia is building this. This is the history, part of the history of the Scioto Valley Model Railroad. Uh, that was our first G scale layout. What happened to that? Somebody planted ivy in there, and the ivy took over, and we lost our we lost our train. We had to come in. You got a little piece of candy while you're waiting there. We we had to. A couple suckers there too. <laughs> Okay, so uh, they had to come in with a backhoe and tear it out, the whole thing. These are the, the charter members that we had. It was started, Jay, uh, Jay Early was uh, just retired. This, this is... Uh, uh, one of the trains from the Civil War uh, representation. We put that up there because 300,000 uh, Ohioans went to fight in the Civil War and over 30,000 did not come back home. So we wanted to uh, honor the both sides, North and South, for the sacrifice that they made. This cabinet here, these are, on the bottom shelf, these are all manuals that the railroad, when they bought engines, they would give us a manual. So we, it was just like a, a new car owner manual that we all get. And so this way we could get in and no matter what engine we got, if there was something that we needed to know about, we could go through those books and, uh, and find it. So we had lockers. And when you got your engine numbers, you knew what they were, whether they were General Electric, Baldwin, Fairbank, Morris, whatever they were. You knew it. And so sometimes you'd grab the manuals. I didn't know that much about Fairbanks Morris, so I always take them I always took the manuals with me. <clears throat> this yellow is a radio acoustic coupler. When radios first came out and they put them on engines in the 1970s, we couldn't talk to Fort Wayne dispatcher. So you would have to take your headset and put it to that black rubber ring and squeeze it and it would make like a squeal sound. And then that made it possible for you to connect to the Fort Wayne dispatcher. Of course, within a year, they did away with them because the new radios that came out had it built in to them. So, uh, there's a nickel plate. This was a, all trains had a first aid kit. And uh, so that was a nickel plate first aid kit. And beside that is uh, what they call a, 
a switch list and he would write, the conductor would write down all the numbers of the car so he knew what train he had to make up. And there might be 150 cars in the yards and he only needed 30 of them. So you'd have to switch those out. This is our, this is our, uh, well, to honor the Appalachian area um, because of the, all the coal jobs and all the railroad jobs that were created in Bluefield and Portsmouth and, and all the way up to Columbus. So this was, this is our way to honor them for all their hard work. Over here, railroad crossing safety. We have a Ford uh, Cobra GT that has been hit by a local, and of course, then the, the highway patrol handles those kind of accidents. And of course, this was the caboose that I built uh, to represent uh, the training that we needed in case you went past the stop and stay signal. Okay? Over here, this is our Christmas city. We still have to add lights to it, but uh, it's to represent the urban areas of our country and how people got around. And so we created a stop to what they call a point to point display so that uh, uh, people can see that trolleys were very important in the history of our country. And up on top of Lazarus is a special guy because it's. He has his own transportation. <laughs> okay. All right. This is to honor World War II. The railroads were extreme, extremely important during the war. Uh, so on the right, we have an, a brakeman's uniform from the 1940s um, from New York Central. It's the actual thing. Now, the pin that's on his... Um, lapel there is his union pin for the for the uh, uh, trainman and of course world war ii this was pam's father's pam fliggle's father's uniform from world war ii <coughs> <coughs> so we wanted to do that and then of course we've got the pictures of the passenger trains that they would have used and uh the only picture that's out of date is the one with the kitchen. When I when we were riding the Rocky Mountaineer, uh, we the door opened and I took their picture. There were five people in that little kitchen working. You want to open the doors? This is a, an actual telephone from a shanty. Uh, when the, the shanties would be all along the line, if you needed to talk to the dispatcher, that's the way you would do it, you'd, where you'd call them up. These are just photographs that uh, we had in some artwork of uh, the railroad industry.
and of course like everything there's collectors pins those are all different railroad collectors pins now this piece is very very rare this came from mr webb's family he got promoted to a chief agent and when he did the railroads all sent him passes and so he could ride their trains and then if you look at the dates all those passes are from 1899 1900 so they're 119 120 years old uh, that was a that was a great great donation that we received <clears throat> okay this stuff over here this is <clears throat> When he got to be a chief, a chief agent, fairs would also send him. He would get complimentary passes to things. Railroads, when you rode their passenger trains, they would give you decks of cards. And, of course, they liked to do that with kids because they didn't want the kids running up and down the passenger cars in the aisles. So they would give them this, and those are from the Chessie system. Over here to the left. Those are insulators that they use on electric wire and, and telegraph wires, which they don't use anymore. Down below, if you, were an, if you are an employee and you don't get injured, then the railroad would give you a hat for, to, uh, for your safety record. So you either got a, a hat or you would get a nice light coat. Okay. <clears throat> Over here, now you're getting into the timetables. Timetables have to be carried by every employee that's working on the railroad. And they, uh, uh, we had a donation, and those are from all over the country in all different time periods. This is an RPO. An RPO stands for Rail Post Office. And the goal of the Rail, 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 rail Post Office is... Of course, they got their mail, they, they got bags of mail as they went along the line, and they would sort it. So we've got, here's a letter for Besiris, Ohio. So that he, you've got to find where Besiris is at. It's down there in that lower cor corner. And from about this distance, you had to throw it into the box so that you could sort the mail. Now, they were much more e proficient than what, <laughs> than what I am, but uh, they're fun to do. <clears throat> 